All right, so I see Disneyland, I see hiking, camping, beach day, snowboarding, so everything outdoors. And that's from someone in our after school program. So that makes sense. They're gonna to talk to us about all of those activities. A warm beach, anywhere with your kids, making memories. That's awesome, that's lovely. I always like seeing these answers. Wherever you're traveling, I see that. Yes, that's why I gave a garden as an example because I know a lot of people that love to sit out in their garden having a cup of coffee. So I see a lot of responses where it's outdoors. Very good, very good. Keep them coming. Y también si alguien aquí necesita interpretación, hay instrucciones en el chat, como agarrarlo aquí básicamente abajo de su pantalla tiene el globito que dice interpretación, si puede uh, ir a ese globito y ahí le podemos dar interpretación a español. So I just said if anyone needs Spanish translation, you can go to the interpretation icon at the bottom of your screen and press it and click on Spanish. You'll automatically get that. Okay, so we'll we'll go ahead and get started. We want to be respectful of your time. Thank you all so much for being here at Coffee with the Principal. This is our first Coffee with the Principal in the evening in English. We usually provide this on Friday mornings, but we weren't getting a whole lot of attendance. So we thought, you know, a lot of people are working in the morning during the week. And, and I know it may conflict. We may not be able to accommodate everyone's schedules, but we'd like to have it uh, offered in the evening. So uh, starting this month, we're having it the first Wednesday of the month in English, and then tomorrow evening, at, which is the first Thursday of the month, we're going to provide it in Spanish. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started, and as always, we will have a session at the end of the meeting for you to ask any questions you may have, uh, but we always like to share the wonderful programs that we have available at Sweetwater High School for all of our students, so with that, I'd like to introduce uh, those that are going to get information regarding the Sweetwater After School programs, and that's Mr. Brandon Rogers and Ms. Rachel Griggs. Hello, good evening. Um, it's just me this round. Uh, yeah, as Dr. Gavin said, my name is uh, Mr. Brandon, Brandon Rogers, a um, couple different nicknames on campus and stuff like that. Um, I am half of the uh, program directors for the After School program here, um, as you can see on the screen. We go by Red Devils After Dark, our dad for short. Um, that's a little bit of about us, but it's very short. Uh, Miss Griggs has been here for 18 years, I believe. Um, she teaches AP Calculus, and she kind of helps out with the district side of things. So um, teachers, things like that. And then that's my email address. I work for South Bay Community Services. Uh, they're, they're back again this year. They were away for a while, but now they're back. And I pretty much oversee the day-to-day -day operations, uh, the staff, things like that, as well as um, some trips and other things. We can go to the next one. Next slide. Uh, currently, we have one staff. Uh, her name is Alyssa Scott. She helps run our media program. If you don't know, Sweetwater is one of the only schools in the district that has a daily uh, news segment. and. Pretty much the only school program that is run out of the after school program so it's a huge thing for our school that's a great way to for our students to get information about uh, from admin from like sports from clubs things like that um, that's on youtube if you'd like to check that out it's under red devils review like it says there i think later on there's also a um a link if you'd like to click on it and she helps facilitate with a couple other clubs um, we are located in the Inferno Lounge, uh, which is right next to the 28th Street Solar Lots and in between the new gym and the 1300s, uh, right next to ROTC if you kind of know campus. Our hours are Monday through Friday from 2.35, like right when the bell rings, until 5.30. And on minimum days, which are PLC Mondays, we operate from 1.30 to 4 o'clock. Um, you're, if you're kind of used to uh, programming with middle schools and elementary schools, it's slightly different. So your students are treated with a little bit more um, responsibility. So they can stay for 15 minutes or they can stay until 530 or stay one hour, stay two hours. It's totally up to them. 
they sign in when they come in and they sign out when they leave and they get involved in between. These are some of our links. So that first one is our website, which is Red Devils After Dark. It has our um, Instagram page. It has our uh, Sweetwater Union, or I mean our um, Sweetwater Suhai Media page for that. And then if you go to, uh, you can see our calendar. So sometimes that shows like monthly uh, things. I go, oh, we gotta fix that. <laughs> um, and then if, it usually has like all the different things that we're doing throughout the month. So different celebrations, different uh, awareness campaigns available, programs goes through everything that we have and it's always evolving, always changing. So we got sciences, some math, some tutoring, English tutoring. Um, we got leadership, which is a big program that we're working to rebuild this year where students learn their skills, their strengths, and then they go on uh, they go on trips to learn more about those and work as a team. We have gaming clubs, so if your students like gaming and things like that. We have host club, which are acting as a networking group and kind of help show the students, make them feel a way, um, more welcome at Sweetwater. Chef de Cuisine, which is something that actually parents and students can um, get in between, or involved with. So students actually pick up a free meal kit from school and then go home and with a series of uh, Zoom or YouTube clips, you actually get to cook a full meal and have a fun time with that. Uh, robotics. The Inferno Lounge is more of just the drop-in center, so that's where I'm currently at right now. Um, we have tons of space for students to study, to operate these clubs, things like that. And then I, when I saw a bunch of outdoor stuff, that made me really happy because one of my favorite clubs is the outdoor club. So we take students hiking. We go, uh, we've gone backpacking in the past. We've gone camping. We do surfing. Um, pretty much any way that we can uh, show the outdoors to the students and kind of get them out of National City, show Julian, show different areas of San Diego County, then we love to do that. For physical fitness activities, we have a daily workouts uh, program. Either it's free weights Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or we have workout of the day, which is more of like a, a group fitness class, and that's operated on Tuesdays and Thursdays. ROTC, Ballet Folklorico, uh, Ladies Softball, and a couple other things that we'll be rotating in re uh, pretty soon with the change of seasons. So that's just a little bit of our programs. Um, staff has like our photos and stuff like that, and a little bit more of a bio of each of us. Um, so Justin, but Justin's, his last day is this Friday, unfortunately, but we're happy to see him go to bigger and better opportunities, but Alyssa's still around, so she's going to be helping us out. And then, um, yeah, so this is a little bit more kind of review of that. Um, but we are, we're always working to make sure that any of our clubs are student-based and student-led. So pretty much everything that's on here is something that a student has come to us and said, hey, I'm really interested in uh, podcasting. So we went and spent money and bought a whole podcasting kit. We bought sound, uh, sound uh, boxes. We bought mics. We bought everything that the students could need. And at the end of the day, if there's not something there, then pretty much our main job is to make it a reality. So your, if your students are interested in starting a club that we do not currently have on campus, then they can either see me or my partner, Ms. Griggs, and we'll pretty much assist with making that or find our best alternative to that club. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. So I missed the beginning part. I heard the part about the clubs, but were you saying that there was like tutoring or something like that? Yeah, so there's a couple different tutoring opportunities. So um, I think it's, yeah, it's right there. So those are run by the teachers and things like that. So they kind of have different time schedules. But if you go to the website, um, which is also, if you go to, uh, if you have an Instagram, Red Devils After Dark, it has our Instagram and it has this page on there as well. Um, it's really easy to find. I think this website's on the school website as well. So it's there's numerous ways to find this website. It kind of gives a little breakdown of different programs and tutoring opportunities. But are the students made aware of the tutoring opportunities or do they have to go on like this Instagram and look for the help? 
There's also usually um, a list of uh, tutoring opportunities. So it's a whole list of different uh, courses and stuff like that. And they're posted around the school in different areas. Okay, but there's nobody like it's not being announced on like the school news or anything. They just have to be looking at like bulletin boards and so forth. Uh, currently, yeah, but we should add that. That's a good point. Hi, uh, sorry to interrupt. I'm uh, Mr. Tom's targeted resource teacher, and there is a full tutoring schedule, not just in the after school program, but there are uh, currently 12 teachers who are teaching various subjects and the tutoring schedule is on the school website uh, and it is posted all around the, the campus. Um, and if students, any student is interested in it, all teachers should have um, a tutoring schedule in the classroom. Yeah, we okay. also have one. We have one posted in the Inferno Lounge right by the drop-in, like right by the door and where the students sign in. So it's it's pretty visible. There's there's a good there's a good amount of signage around campus for students. Thank you. And something I wanted to to emphasize because every time we present this information regarding what our after school program offers our students, you know, regarding all these special classes and field trips. Um, these different experiences, cooking classes, I mean, and, and we provide the materials, this is all free. So yeah. I always want to bring that up because I would, a lot of people think, well, what's the cost? Because you're buying materials, you're getting uh, maybe on a bus to go somewhere, to go hiking, kayaking, it's all free. We get a special grant from the state uh, every five years that allows us to get this money from the state and we're able to provide this program for all of our students free of charge. Yeah, I always forget that, but yeah, everything included in the program is completely free. Um, and in slightly normal times, we go on campus crawls. So usually we'll take students to uh, colleges throughout or California and they'll be on a charter bus. They have like hotel rooms, food, all that kind of stuff is totally provided. Um, camping trips, any of the food, the tents, all the materials are included. And any of these trips, like Dr. Gavin was saying, it's completely free to you and your student. All right. Thank you, Brandon, so much. Uh, always, always a pleasure to have you give us an update on what's going on in our after school program. And we always like our parents and our students, our families to be aware of what we have to offer after the instructional day is over. And the purpose of the after school program is to make sure we have a safe environment for students after school that they have, I know a lot of times parents may not get home from work until late, but at least until 5.30, students are able to be on our campus and not just sit and wait, but they're engaged in meaningful activities, learning experiences, or they can get help in their, in their classes as well. So we always look for ways to assist our students. Okay, so next uh, we have our head counselor, Mr. Marco Garcia who's here to give us a counseling center update. Good evening, good evening. My name is Marco Garcia, head counselor here at Sweetwater High School. It's a pleasure to be with you guys here this evening. Um, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Brandon, for all that information. Um, that it, It's just great to see all the support and all the resources that are available for our students uh, during school, after school, at any time of the day, right? So, so even though we may uh, still be going through some difficult times as we have returned to school this year and we've gone through all the ups and downs. Um, everything that we have for students and all the resources and all the supports and all the activities, they're still there and we're still moving strong with that. And that goes for us in the counseling center as well. So just a few updates. The first few things I have here on the first slide, this is more for our seniors. Um, so. This is an important time of the year for our seniors who are looking uh, at their post-secondary options, whether it's college, whether it's four-year university, whether it's, it's job training, uh, trade school, whatever it may be, the FAFSA application is important. And we push that and we push it because through the FAFSA, it being a government application, students are able to receive government funds. In many cases, free money free money for our students that is there, that the government holds, that, that has to go out to students uh, to assist them in their post-secondary plans. So we can't stress enough to please um, encourage your seniors, those of you that have seniors, to please uh, fill out the FAFSA if they haven't already. A lot of students have, but a lot of students haven't. 
So we really want the students to really buckle down and sit down. It, it's kind of an extensive application, but um, it's worth it in the end because uh, the government will provide free money to our students. We also have the California Dream Act um, application. So if you don't know which one your student should fill out, please come and uh, have them speak with the counselor and we'll direct them toward the right application. But again, that one's very important. Also for our seniors community, college applications um, are out. And um, we encourage all of our seniors who are looking to go to community college after they graduate to start jumping on, whether it be Southwestern College, Mesa College, San Diego City College. We have Grossmont, which is another great local community college. All the apps are out, they're all online. They're all user friendly applications. So we encourage all of our students to start thinking about their community college applications if that's the direction that they're going in to. Um, so for those of those in the month, for the, those two applications in the month of February, currently we started this week, every Tuesday and Thursday, as you can see there, we will be assisting with these applications after school in the counseling center for an hour, 2.45 to 3.45. So we encourage students to come in and we'll help you fill it out. Counselors are there in our computer area in the counseling center. We sit down with the students, they turn on the laptop and we fill it out together if, if they feel that the need is there. So uh, we've even had some parents come in with the students um, who have questions about the FAFSA. So please come in if, if it's needed uh, in the month of February, Tuesdays and Thursdays after school. Mr. Garcia, sorry, yeah. someone put in the chat if students uh, get this information or know about this before they are seniors. Yes, so all of this information is pushed out by counselors via whether it be the news, whether it be through their email Jupiter. Um, all of this information is also given to them as we meet with them every year. So counselors meet with students every year uh, to do a core, cur core curriculum lesson. And I'm gonna talk about that on the next slide. So in our presentations, we talk about FAFSA, we talk about financial aid, we talk about post-secondary plan, we talk about all of, uh, these in all of this information at that level. And then when the time comes, we start pushing out a lot of um, information to their Jupiter and to their email. So yes, that information goes out in many forms. <clears throat> so here we have, uh, so currently uh, we're, we're also starting credit recovery uh, toward the end of February. So as you guys can see there, students will have a credit recovery option. All students who have received a D, a F or an NCP during the last couple of years, they have the opportunity to make up that class, especially if it's a core class. Any student failing or getting Ds or NCPs in their math classes, social science classes, history classes, uh, science classes, PE classes, those are all classes that are needed for graduation. So any student that has failed or received a D in those classes, we are giving credit recovery, a credit recovery opportunity come the end of February. It's a seven week session, as you see there. Um, it's after school Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2.45 to 4.15. The message went out to all students today by one of our assistant principals. So that message has gone out. In that message, there's a link, very easy. There's a link in that message where the student just has to click and sign up for the, there's a drop down menu and they sign up for the class that they need. So the deadline to sign up for credit recovery is February 18th. So please talk to your children and ask them if they have received a DF or NCP and encourage them to sign up have them go look in their email and have them sign up for credit recovery that is starting at the end of this month. Um, same thing goes for summer school. The district already started talking about summer school. Summer school is the same idea. It's, a, it's another way for students to recover those Ds, Fs, and NCPs. The district will be pushing out this information to a lot of our students starting this month as well. That is for summer school. I kind of don't want to jump the gun because credit recovery comes first and then we have summer school. But I just want you to know that those are the two options that all students have in order to recover grades that they have received those Ds or Fs in. 
Any questions in terms of credit recovery or summer school? I know this is a big one. I know a lot of our students have struggled in the last couple of years um, just because of all the challenges that have been going on. So, so this is something that we really wanna provide for our students in order to have them start to recoup these credits that they have failed at some point. I, I can't see the chat, so I don't know if there's any questions in the chat as far as credit recovery. If, if not, I can go on. Not any right now, you can go on. Okay. Um, and, and finally, I, I wanted to let parents know that uh, the counselors just finished our post-secondary planning presentations and lessons with our 11th graders. So again, we see all levels, we see all the grades, and we just finished this, this, this presentation with all of our 11th graders where we went in and, and we really spoke to all our juniors about college, university. Uh, we talked to them about military, apprenticeship options, vocational trainings, et cetera. So in the 11th grade, we really try to get that awareness going in our juniors because they will be our seniors real soon. And once you're a senior, uh, it's sometimes too late to start thinking about that. And I'm not saying it's too late to the point where you can't do anything now, but, but we really do encourage our, our students to start thinking about their post-secondary options, meaning what are they going to do after high school? We want them to really start thinking about that come their junior year. That way, come their senior year, they can be on that track and start working and applying and doing whatever they have to do to really follow that path. Um, so we just finished that with our juniors and uh, starting starting next week. This is important. Um, st starting next week, counselors are going to start to meet with all students to start to uh, pick their courses for next year. So course selection for the 2022-23 school year starts in about a week. And this is where we meet with students and students can really start to think about what courses, what electives, what programs, academies, whatever it may be, what they want to get into for this uh, following year. So it's an important time for, for students. Students get excited, students get anxious because they're already thinking about the next year and what are the new opportunities and new classes that they will be encountering in their next grade. So that's going to be starting. So they're going to be meeting with your with their counselors soon, right? To pick their classes for next year? Correct. So we they they're going to be starting to meet with us starting next week. So it's it's going to be a good five week five week window that we're going to cover, and we're going to meet all of our students. We're going to meet with all of our students at Sweetwater, and we're also going to meet with our students from the feeder schools coming in from Granger and coming in from National. That's correct. And then are they going to are the students that are currently there going to get like the information ahead of time so they can really think about what they want to do next year and how to like do their time because I know my child is an athlete and it's like she has to pick and choose, you know, clubs, practices, stuff. That's correct. No, yeah, that's that's definitely one of the um that's definitely one of the points of anxiety for a lot of our students because Sweetwater has so many options for so many students and, and it, it, it really gets to the point where a student sometimes has to choose just, just you know, do I want to be in the health academy? Do I want to follow the athletic path? Do I, I want to like get but in? If they have a heads up. Yeah. So what's going to happen is we're going to provide with students all the information. And then the students are going to be given the opportunity to start working and choosing their classes. But every year, the students are given a window. Every year, the students are given a window where they're given the form. Now, the one thing we're not sure of yet, and we will know in the next week or so, if the form will be a written form, like it has been in the past, where they're able to take it home, they're able to look it over with parents, you guys can kind of work on it together and make those decisions that you're talking about, or if it's going to be electronic where the students are able to go into the system and pick it electronically either way students will have a window of time to work on that to look it over talk it over with parents students come back and ask us questions if there's something that they don't know about a class or if there's a little more information they would like to know about a class students are able to come talk to counselors as well um, so to answer your question, yes, students will be given a window of time to make those decisions. But they're going to have, for me, 
what my experience has been so far is I'm not getting the information or she's not getting the information or we have to go looking for the information. Okay. And it's hard for me because I work a lot and she's new to the school. She wasn't able to participate in ASB because she was coming from not one of your official feeder schools. So for me, it's like, I want you to get into this type of stuff. I want you to do different things. I want you to explore your options. But if you're not familiar with Sweetwater and you don't know where to look, I just asked her, did you know about this Instagram page that your school has to like look at clubs and this and that? She looked at me like deer in the headlights. Yeah. So, so the, the best place to start, if a student really wants that information and they're, they're kind of in that situation where I don't know where to look, have them come and see their counselor, have, have, okay. them, have the student go and talk to the counselor and we can give them all this information. This information mm -hmm. does go out through the different avenues that, that we kind of talked about already. So it does go out, but I totally get it. Cause I hear students every day tell me, Oh. Well, if you don't know what, if you don't know that you need to look for the information, you know, if you don't know that this is coming up, like you don't, you don't know. To, well, at the beginning, that. every student is told that they have a school email. I tell every student, you need to check your email and your Jupyter messages daily, daily, because all this information, and I ask students, they're like, I didn't know we had credit recovery. Have you checked your well, Jupiter I looked, messages? I looked, They're on, like, I looked no. on the Jupiter grades. I looked on the Jupiter so, grades. And at the last visit, yeah. the teacher said that grade recovery information was on Jupiter grades and it wasn't. So okay. I'm saying me as a parent, when you guys are telling me you can go here to find the information and I go there and it's not there, it kind of makes me scratch my head. Like how is my child, you know, who went from, you know, uh, a junior high where they're like pretty much hand delivery, you know, the information to, okay, now you got to go figure it out on your own. Yeah. I just um, feel like, I just feel like there's more ways to get the information to the students, because honestly, if you just tell them in the beginning of the year, it goes in one year and out the other. I agree. No. Yeah. I, and, and, you know, and that's something that we as a school and we as a team can come together and we're always thinking of different ways to disseminate information, whether it be through through Jupiter, whether it be the email, uh, if we're using our our media, like um, Mr. Brandon just mentioned, um, our Red Devil Review or whatever it is we're using. So I, I think we can always kind of revisit that as a school and as a team, but that the information's there, that the information's being pushed out, it is. And I, and you know, we always ask students, come and talk to your counselor, talk to your teachers, if there's something that you have a doubt about. Um, but that the information goes out, the information goes out. It does. Um, but I, I, I appreciate that feedback and, and that's definitely something for us as a school and as a school team to come together and to really talk a little more about the ways that our information is going out. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I think we, I, I think we can move on to the next slide. Okay. And you know, the last thing, and here's another form of communication that that's there. Uh, so Suhai Counseling, I always plug our website. I always talk about our website because it is a very thorough website. So, so please feel free to come on SuhaiCounseling.com. All the information that a student, that a student would need, everything that I talk about is always on here and some. So, so if you guys want to visit this website, kind of play with the different tabs, know who your counselors are, you can, you can uh, go on the contact us up top. Uh, graduation requirements, community service, everything is there. And one of our counselors does a great job of keeping up with our um, with our Suhai website as well. So, so at any time you guys can visit this and I'll say it again, if there's any questions, if there's any doubts, please uh, reach out to your counselors, uh, call, email, or walk in. Um, and uh, a counselor will be happy to work with you guys. Thank you. I, I appreciate your time. I know that was a lot of information. Um, I don't know if there's any more questions there on the chat or if anybody just wants to ask, <laughs> that's great too. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Okay. We appreciate all the information and we'll certainly continue to update how we push out the information to our families, not just 
uh, counseling center information, but all information on campus. So with that, uh, I know we may have had some difficulties with our attendance link. I'm not sure if that's already uh, been fixed, um, but we do all, always appreciate everyone clicking on the attendance link we post in the chat so that we're able to uh, capture everyone's attendance. And um, can either Denise or Eric, can you confirm if the attendance link is up and running right now or are we gonna, are we still trying to fix it? Yeah, Ms. Martinez is currently working on it. We're gonna test it one more time and then I will run in the chat as soon as we um, resolve the issue. Okay, thank you. So yes, we appreciate everyone's patience. We still have a little bit more information to cover anyway, but uh, we'll remind you or we'll let you know when we have it in the chat and it's working again. All right, now we'd like to turn it over to Mr. Toms, who's gonna to give us some parent center updates. Hi, good evening, everybody. Again, I'm Mr. Toms, a targeted uh, support resource teacher here at Sweetwater High School. Uh, I just really wanna welcome Ms. Uh, Carmen Gutierrez, who was recently voted in for Title I and ELAC parliamentarian. So everybody, please little welcome her and she, she was, she's gonna do amazing, I know. Uh, and again, let me, um, if I can, I'm gonna share my screen for a minute. And I want to show everybody, this is the, um, the school website. Uh, and if you click on the parent tab here, you can go down and here is the new, here's the parent, the, the current parent newsletter. And if you click on Mr. that. You, I'm oh. sorry, Mr. Toms, are you sharing your screen? Because we don't see that. No, oh, you're not seeing it. Okay, let me go back and make sure I am. All right, how's that? Yes, thank you. Okay. I'm gonna go back. This is, let me go back from the start. Sorry about that. This is the school website. And if you see the tabs up here and earlier somebody asked about the, um, the tutoring schedule. So if you can have your, uh, your student or yourself uh, click on the student link and you go down here and you will find the tutoring schedule. And I, I know it's down a little ways. It, it, as you can see, we do have a lot of opportunities for tutoring. Um, you know, there are five science teachers, five math teachers, uh, three social science teachers, some VAPA and English and a study hall where students can go if they just need a quiet place to finish their homework. Uh, and, and they have the days and times there. All the times are from 2.45 to 3.45, but the days vary. So it, it really helps to, to look at the schedule. Um, and, and again, and, and as, the, as I I'm, don't know which parent was mentioning this, the tutoring schedule, but I will talk to Ms. Rayleigh, who's in charge of the website and see if we can get the tutoring schedule maybe a little more front and center. That way it, it might not be so, so hard to find. Um, but clicking back, to, let me get right back there, sorry. Clicking back to the start, I'm gonna, if you click on the parent tab and right there at the top, there is a, another link to the parent newsletter and the February edition is out uh, and has the bell schedule, our new uh, principal's message by Dr. Gavin. It talks about the advanced placement program which are AP tests. I know it seems like it's far away there in May, but that, that, that arrives very quickly. And, um, and it takes, uh, the registration is due, I know this month. So if, you're, if your student is in AP classes, please uh, check the registration. And we just learned this at counseling. We just heard that from Mr. Garcia. Uh, there's the emails to all the counselors and the alphabet to see where your student falls and what counselor they, uh, they have our resource department here, uh, the parent center, which we just talked about. And here's the parent committee. And there is our new honoree, Ms. Carmen Gutierrez. And once again, welcome, Ms. Gutierrez. We know you'll do a super job. Uh, this is our coffee with the principal we're in right now. Um, and those of you who, uh, it's the same meeting, but we do have coffee with the principal tomorrow night uh, in Spanish with English translation. So interpretation. So please, if, if you know somebody who would prefer that, that is available tomorrow night. The Zoom link is here with the QR code um, right there. 
PK. So this, some of you uh, parents have already been notified uh, by PK and recruited. Um, if you have not, uh, there is still time to sign up. Um, it is, uh, if you are interested in helping your students with their STEM uh, moving forward, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. Uh, me being a former math teacher, I really, really pushed this program. Um, the, these degrees in college are highly, highly marketable and sought after. So if, if you're worried about your, your, your son or daughter or, or your student going to college and not finding a job after college, STEM degrees are highly, highly sought after. And, and this uh, is a workshop that helps you navigate the STEM program with your student along the way. And that is Wednesday, uh, starts Wednesday next week, 6 p.m. Uh, and more info, there's the, the number down there for Ms. Adrian Shaw. You can give her a call and you can register right there. So please take advantage of the program. It's an excellent program. Uh, and then you have virtual chats. And, uh, th and this goes on to, to uh, later um, newsletters. So it please peruse the uh, parent newsletter. So that's all we have for uh, parent updates. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tan. And again, we, we keep repeating this over and over. Uh, we don't expect you to memorize all this information during Coffee with the Principal, or if another question comes up later in the month, don't wait until the next Coffee with the Principal in March. Please reach out to us. For example, if you have any parents have questions regarding anything on campus, our community relations facilitator, Alma Martinez Moran, her phone number at school is there, her email is there on the screen. Or if you don't remember this information on how to contact her, just call the school and say, can, can someone from the parent center please talk to me? I have some questions. And depending on what your questions may be, she can certainly either answer the questions or direct you to the right person you need to talk to. All right, with that, we're gonna move on to our next item on the agenda. Before we go on to general questions, again, we wanna be respectful of your time. We appreciate you joining us this evening. I just wanna go over some COVID protocol updates. And I, I went over this a few weeks ago at the last coffee with the principal, but I want to remind you again that our governor of California stated in Assembly Bill 167, and it became into effect in our district on January 19th, so just last month. And that's that students who have to quarantine and stay at home due to COVID, whether either they have COVID or they're quarantined because maybe someone at home has COVID and they're not vaccinated, so they need to stay home quarantine. They are able to log into their Google Classroom for each of their classes and receive instruction for about 20 minutes during the block period days, which are Tuesday through Friday, and about 10 to 15 minutes on Mondays, which are the periods one through six. So this certainly doesn't take the place of regular instruction, but staff is able to provide students instruction who have to stay at home, answer any questions they may have regarding the assignments that are posted in Google Classroom. And we do this because we wanna make sure that even though once they come back to school after their quarantine, they will be given time by their teachers to complete their assignments and turn them in for credit. So they're not gonna be penalized or, I mean, unless they turn them in like two months later, but after they come back from their quarantine, they're given time to make up those assignments. But if they're not that sick and they're able to log into their Google Classroom and listen in on instruction and do some of their work and turn in their assignments, it's better to do that than to fall behind because once they come back, then they're not only having to do the current work uh, from when they return to class, but then they're having to do the makeup work from when they were out. But that's only if they're able to. We also know that they may be too sick to even log in to the class, and that's okay. This is just an option, something that's available for students who are quarantined. We also encourage students to regularly check their Google Classrooms. Teachers are reminded to keep those assignments posted and to keep those instruction links posted for students who have to learn from home. Now I wanna emphasize, this is only for students who are quarantined 
and have to stay at home. This is not an option for students to stay at home and learn from home because they will be marked absent and they will not get credit for being at school. So we need to make sure everyone understands that uh, students are still expected to go to school every day. And then lastly, and this is whether you have, the student has to stay at home for quarantine reasons, for COVID or, or anything else, we always encourage students and families to communicate with your teachers. So if there's a question, a doubt, please email the teacher of record. If you don't know the teacher's email, I mean, you can go to our school website and you can find the teacher's emails there. But again, if you have any questions, any doubts, or you need to communicate with the teacher, but you don't know how, call the school. And the person who answers the phone will be able to guide you and will be able to, or at least relay the message to the teacher and let them know that you wish to communicate with them. But we always encourage students, please don't wait until May, like one or two weeks before the semester is over to communicate with your teachers. Please make sure that if there are any questions, discrepancies, if students notice their grades, aren't matching what they thought they should be to always reach out to the teacher. Okay, and then next, um, the things we continue to emphasize on campus so that parents know, everyone must wear a mask indoors. Adults, students, parents, whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, if you're inside a room, a building, you have to wear a mask. Now, even though it's not mandatory to wear a mask outdoors, we do recommend it to students because especially during lunchtime or break, you know, we have about a little over 2,600 students on campus and they tend to hang out with their friends. Sometimes they're in large groups. So we tell them, unless you're eating food and obviously you have to take off your mask, we tell them to wear their mask. When I'm outdoors, I wear my mask all the time because a lot of times a student will come right up to me to ask me a question, which we always encourage, but we want to protect each other. We also encourage that everyone stays socially distanced. Again, a lot of times that's difficult for our students because they have their friends, they're comfortable. They don't want to think that their friend that they've known most of their lives may have COVID, but we should kind of treat each other like, well, they might have COVID, especially right now. It seems like some can catch it pretty easily. Even a lot of people that are vaccinated are catching it. So we tell them just try to keep a distance. And then also very important, this is number one actually. We wanna remind everyone that if students are experiencing any symptoms, they need to stay home. It does, they don't, we don't need them to go get tested first to make sure it's COVID and then they stay home. If you have symptoms, you stay home. It was about two weeks ago, I had a sore throat a little sore throat, but I stayed home that day because I didn't know if it was COVID. I got tested, it was negative. The next day I thought, well, hopefully the sore throat goes away and it did. So I was able to go back to school. But if I still continued to have a sore throat and even if I had a negative COVID test, I had to stay home. So please make sure students stay home if they have any symptoms. And of course, if they need to go get tested. And once the symptoms go away and they have a negative test, they come back to school. Um, and then uh, finally, I mean, it, if, if students are eligible, which they all are right now, they can get vaccinated or get their booster. Of course, you know, that's not mandatory. We are not making that mandatory right now for students to get vaccinated, but that's, that's another protection for students if they so wish to get that. Quick question. Yes. So what I've heard is that if a patient or a patient, <laughs> if, a person, if a person has COVID um, and they already get over the hump, technically they're supposedly not um, like uh, contagious, I guess. Um, it's usually they're contagious even before they present symptoms and then the symptoms come and then they test positive and then 10 days from there, they should be able to, to like go back at least like to work. Is that the same as going back to school or do we have to wait that like 60 days or 90 days until they have the negative COVID test to go back? Oh no, they, thank you for bringing that up. They come back on day 11. So, okay, so okay. and they don't have to go get tested and have a negative test because you're right. If a student or anyone gets COVID, they could potentially test positive 
for up to 90 days. We okay. certainly don't want to keep our students at home for 90 days. So after they fulfill their quarantine of 10 days, they come back on day 11. So if, if your son or daughter starts to experience symptoms today, day one is tomorrow. So today is day zero if they experience symptoms today. Day one is tomorrow. And then you count 10 days, they come back on day 11. But when you call the school or email the school to notify us that your student has symptoms or you tested them and they have COVID, then we're gonna ask you, okay, when did they start experiencing symptoms? And, or when did they get tested? Sometimes they may not experience symptoms. They may just go get tested because that's something they do regularly. So whenever they get tested and they, they show up as positive, that next day is day one. So whichever comes first, whether it's the symptoms or the test, their day one is that following day. And once you count out 10 days, day 11 is the day they go back to school and they don't have to have a negative test, but they do have to be symptom free. So if on day 11, they fulfill their quarantine, but they still have a cough or sore throat or a stomach ache, they still need to stay home. But once they're symptom free and after the 10 days, they come back to school. And again, if you forget this information, it's always best you can call the school and usually our attendance coordinators, they, they take the calls and they'll help guide you because they're, I mean, daily work. I mean, it's a lot less now. In January, it was a lot. After the holidays, um, you know, we had honestly a, a lot of positive cases, but right now it seems to have gone down quite a bit, which is great. But we continue to tell people just because it's going down, don't start taking off your mask and, and be really close to people and go to social gatherings and because that's where people are getting it. Um, frankly, the majority of people, whether it's staff or students that have gotten COVID, they didn't quite, they didn't really contract it out on campus. It was at home or with friends or family. The majority, the ones that are telling us, well, yes, I found out later that my cousin was positive and we hung out over the weekend. So that's where it's mostly happening. So we tell them, don't put, don't put your guard down, literally. Don't put your mask down. Keep wearing those masks. Are there any other general questions before we conclude our Coffee with the Principal? Hi, yes, my name is Aida. I have a comment per se. Yeah. So my son had complained that one of the teachers doesn't allow him to go to the restroom. Uh, they said that you just went to the restroom two hours ago. Uh, so why do you have to go again? And they commented that I sometimes hold it in for five, six hours. And I was like, well, that's kind of, you know, personal option. But if a person or a kid needs to go to the restroom, I don't think they should be told not to, especially when I tell my kid, you need to be hydrated. You need to be drinking water because, you know, you want to be healthy or you have a sports later on. So that's kind of one of my things that, I don't think the teachers should be holding a kid, uh, not allowing them to go to the restroom. That's all, thank you. Yes, uh, thank you for the reminder. I just wrote myself a note. I will send a reminder email to staff tomorrow morning because you're right. Uh, if students need to you'll go use the restroom, even if they used it an hour ago, if they say, I really need to go, we need to let them go. So sometimes what teachers might bring up is that, the same student goes all the time. What I tell them to do is if you think they're just trying to get out of class, what I would do is I call the parent or I email the parent asking, hey, your son or daughter asks every day to go use the restroom and they're gone for a long period of time. Is there a condition or something we should be aware of? And, and, you know, and, and a lot of times the parent might say, oh yes, I forgot to call the nurse and let her know that they do have a condition where they frequently need to use the restroom. We have a doctor's note, we'll turn it in. Or the parent might say, no, there's no reason why they should be asking to use the restroom every hour and should be gone for so long. Um, so communication is key, but I will remind teachers to allow students, they, if they say they need to go use the restroom, they need to use it because it, it can cause other health complications if they, they hold it and they really have to go. And we don't want students to be uncomfortable and not be able to learn in class if they're not able to go to the bathroom. But thank yes. you for that reminder. Thank you. Um, Dr. Gavin? Yes. 
So I think you did bring up a good point. I completely agree with the other mom that the kids should have to go to the bathroom. But you brought up that there are some students that, you know, have a pattern where they take the bathroom pass and they're gone almost the whole period. So are those kids like, is there like a record of that? Or like, are those kids being talked to? Because I know some classes end up having kids that don't belong in the class, or then there's confrontation with other students, and there's been, you know, little conflict, conflicts or, or, or fights and stuff like that. And of course, teachers don't know because this is happening when kids are supposed to be in class. So are, is there like, are teachers logging, you know, these students that disappear for half the class period or have like a pattern of this? Yes, so what we ask teachers to do, and teachers will email us, or they'll call the front office and say, hey, I just gave uh, Maribel Gavin a pass to go to the restroom. She's been gone for a long time. Can someone please go check? So we have campus assistants uh, who are, are periodically throughout the day checking the restrooms to make sure that, first of all, that everything's okay in there, that we don't have, because sometimes in the past, maybe a student is hiding there, they're ditching class, and and sometimes they, they're not feeling well, or whether it's physically or mentally, they, they just have some problems. So we escort them to the counseling center because we tell them, you know, the bathroom's not the right place for you to be by yourself if you have some problems going on. But if we know or made aware by teachers that students are either abusing the past, that it's a pattern, or even if it's a one time, but hey, they've been gone for 45 minutes, or we, we're not going to wait 45 minutes, but let's say they've been gone 20 minutes. Can someone please go check the restroom to make sure they're okay? Because sometimes they're either exactly. yes, feeling really sick or they're not in the restroom. So then every everyone that has a radio, all the administrators, the campus assistants, we all carry a radio and they'll say, hey, we're looking for Maribel Gavin. She asked to go use the restroom 20 minutes ago. Should have gone to the 600 building restroom. She's not there. And we already checked all the restrooms. She's not er anywhere. And we please keep an eye out. And if we can't find them in a few minutes, we call home. And because I've done that, because maybe they left school and we don't know. So we call or maybe some, could, anything could happen. Anything exactly. could happen. They could have passed it out. There could exactly. have been a safety no, we, issue. But I, right. that's why I just wanted to know because so many things as a parent go through your mind. All the possibilities. Oh my God, what happened? So I just wanted to know. I, I like that that small time frame because if you let too much time go by, it's hard to. Oh, to right. find them if they need help or something. Okay, thank you. Yes, and like I said, campus assistance, that's part of their rotation during class periods. They go in and out of restrooms just to, to check and make sure everyone's okay in there if they're using the restroom. Are there any other questions? And Ms. Becker, thank you for the compliment. We appreciate the support and glad you're getting the information. But you know, we, we are always looking for, we always recognize we have room for growth. So we always, try to communicate, even if we feel we're over communicating, I'd rather we over communicate than under communicate. I've always said this and our staff hears me say this all the time, any communication is key in any relationship, personal or professional. So we're always gonna do our best to get that information out to you. That's how we can work best together to help our kids. And have we been able to fix the attendance link to take today's attendance? Or I don't know if maybe um, we're able to capture attendance through the chat or through the attendance. Our participants link down here tells us who is here. But uh, do we have an update on the attendance link? Because I think we're going to conclude talking with the principal. Denise or Eric? I'm sorry. I believe um, there, there has been some issues that can't be fixed. Um, would everybody mind direct messaging me just your name, your first and last name and the student first and last name? And then I'll be sure to type them up on an Excel sheet. Okay, thank you, Denise. So yes, if you can just go to the chat and direct message Denise and Negus. So instead of everyone, um, just click on Denise and Negus. And then um, like she said, if you can type your name, your student's name, was there anything else? Just the parent's name and student's name? Yes, just um, parent first and last name and student um, first and last name. And then I'll be sure to type them up. Perfect, yes. So Eric, our bilingual tester, he just uh, gave an example in the chat of what you can type 
directly to Denise. So if everyone can take a minute to do that. And then uh, I saw a question in the chat, how often do we check bathrooms? So like I said, the campus assistants are on a rotation. So usually it's about every half hour. And, and I know the thing is we, we can't have them in the bathroom the whole time. We have a lot of different restrooms on campus. And we also have other areas on campus that need to be supervised, but it's about every 30 minutes. Um, we do ask students that if they go into the restroom and see something that shouldn't be happening to tell an adult, we don't say, oh, Joey came and told me that they saw you vaping in the, in the bathroom. But I've had a lot of students, when they see something that's not right on campus, they'll come up to me and say, oh, Dr. Gavin, I see this going on over there. Okay, thank you. And we get over there right away. I don't even take their name. I don't need to have their name. I just want to get to the situation and take care of it, make sure we have a safe environment on campus for our students. But we always encourage students, please come and let an adult know. Uh, it doesn't have to be the principal. It doesn't have to be the assistant principal. If you just find an adult, let them know, hey, I see someone doing something in the bathroom and they're not supposed to. Okay, thank you. And they'll call the right people or they themselves will go and check it out. Okay, so thank you. Those that are either directly uh, messaging Denise or if you put it in the um, all chat, then we'll make sure we capture that as well. But please make sure you write your name and your student's name because it's really important for us to, to know how many parents attend these meetings because the more parents we have attending, the more we know we need to provide these meetings for you. So we are happy that we're able to provide this out in the evenings in English because we were having some low attendance in the morning and we figured, you know what, people are working, maybe this is better. And especially now that we're doing it virtually, you know, you can be at home and get your family set up with dinner and do some other things, but at least you're able to listen in. So I do appreciate all of you who attended. And we'll see you next month, uh, the first Wednesday of the month in March. We will have coffee with the principal at six o'clock again, right here, same link. So you could just always tune in on the same link. And again, have a wonderful night and enjoy your weekend that's around the corner. We'll see you next time.